one of our viewers, Carl Statham, asked me, why are there so many Tesla superchargers in and around Sheffield, which is where his question is based, and yet none of them are open to all? He asks, is there anything we can do about it, or is there a reason why they're not open to all. We've arrived in Sheffield, and one of the first places you go, head towards the town centre and find one of the really big retail parks, because that's normally where you're going to find your chargers. Now, here we have found a row of Tesla superchargers. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve supercharger, and Carl is absolutely right, none of them are open to all. These are Tesla only. When we look at the price, 35p off peak, 39p peak. So what about the rest of the retail park? Well, in actual fact, there is no rest of the retail park as far as charges are concerned, because there's nothing here at all. It is absolutely bereft of EV chargers. This is a big retail park. We've got a McDonald's, there's a Pizza Hut, uh, Ikea, and all of the things like gyms and Poundland and well, everything you can think of. And other than here, not a single charger. So we go exploring, and I did a good, it's a marathon walk, it's all the way over there. Uh, went through the IKEA car park, and right at the far side of IKEA car park, it's underground, uh, there are two grid surf chargers, a 60 kilowatt dual bay, and there's also a dual fast charger there. That's it. So, Carl, you're absolutely right. If you want to charge on this re retail park while you're having a lunch or doing the gym or going to buy your new television in Curry's, uh, you're out of luck. So what else is around? We've got to do a bit of exploring. So having walked all that way over there, I came back here and thought, there's got to be one at McDonald's. They always have either an Instabolt or um, something outside every McDonald's here. Nothing at all, nothing outside Pizza Hut, just nothing in the rest of this retail park. But when I look right the way through the trees, you might just be able to see them uh, probably three, four hundred yards away. I can see some Ionity chargers. They look like the 350 kilowatts, but they're not here. They don't count. I don't know where they are. I believe there's a um, a Starbucks or something over there, so they might be in the car park of theirs. I'm not going to explore because that's not the point. Carl's point was, why aren't these open to all, particularly now that we know that nobody else is. So while we were on the way here, we didn't just come directly here. We thought we'd have a look around. And one of the places we stopped was at Rotherham, uh, just a few miles down the road, I think three or four miles down the road. So effectively on the outskirts of Sheffield, although people from Rotherham probably hate me for saying that. Uh, but this is a brand new motorway service, a welcome break. And down there, we filmed uh, Tesla. There's 20 Tesla V3 superchargers and they are not open to all. And alongside them were what will be, they're installing at the moment, 24 uh, Apple Green electric chargers. And they obviously are open to all, including Tesla drivers, uh, although we never would. Uh, so that's sort of continuing the theme, Carl, that um, Rotherham services, yeah, Tesla's not open to all. Now, on a motorway services, we have a different situation. That could be purely contractual. In other words, uh, Tesla and uh, Apple Green have both said, uh, we want exclusivity. We will not, uh, Apple Green might say, we will not allow Tesla on here if they are going to open to all and drop the prices. Uh, and uh, Tesla might say to Apple Green, yeah, do what you want. We'll just sell at our silly cheap price to our own drivers. So there are contractual differences and that might apply here. There might be something about the location which Tesla has signed up and others uh, have now missed out. Out. Uh, but also on the way down, there was Woodall services on the M1. Uh, once again, that's Tesla only. So you can't, within a reasonable 10 mile or so uh, radius of Sheffield, find any Tesla chargers which are open to all. So that raises a very good question. So what might be the reason for that? Now, on a recent trip down to London, we actually stopped off at Tottenham, which is the Tesla service center on the outskirts of London. And there we came across this really interesting sign, which said, this supercharger 
is no longer open to all. It has been restricted to Tesla only. Please, please do not try to charge here if you're a non-Tesla driver. So of course that immediately sparks a lot of interest. So we go in and have a word with the engineers. And what it turned out was really quite simple and possibly a clue card towards the answer here. Down in Tottenham, the, the second they opened up, the uh, Tesla service center uh, opened to all. Uh, they found they had massive, massive queues. And it turned out it was taxi drivers. There's loads of taxi drivers. A lot of them have got Tesla cars, but a lot of them also have Ionics and other cars because uh, there's lots of offers going on with people like Uber and uh, the likes. So they found they were actually clogging up the whole of the charger. Uh, it meant nobody could actually get a decent charge. The queue at some points was going right out onto the road and it went out onto the main road and it was blocking traffic. And it was clearly, first of all, unsuitable for that volume of traffic, but secondly, it was he heading into the dangerous where this was now starting to block main roads and causing uh, highway traffic, which is uh, in itself a little bit serious. So they did the only thing they could do. They said, right, on this particular location, this one only, uh, we are going to look at this and say, this location cannot handle the sort of traffic we absolutely know we will get if we open it up to everyone. So that had a logical reason. So how does that apply to this location? Well, if you look at this now, we've got absolutely no bays occupied. It's totally deserted. And that would indicate that there's loads of capacity here and it's not a major issue like it was in Tottenham. However, looks can be very deceptive. When we arrived, uh, I think it was either four or five cars were here. The bay was half, half uh, occupied. And so this is a popular one. It has its peaks and troughs. It's a bit like if you go over into McDonald's, there'll be times you go there, you'll be queuing up to place your order. There'll be other times you just walk straight through and you get your order. So all businesses, all companies, all products, all services will have peaks and troughs. And it's just the way of the business. You cannot ever build enough capacity, say at McDonald's, so that nobody ever, ever will queue there. And the same with these. Tesla will have looked at these, as will all other CPOs, and they'll have said, how many chargers can we justify here? And Tesla, for whatever reason, has decided the answer is, what did we say, 12? They 10, 12, 12. So 12, they do install f smaller chargers than that. Smallest around here, actually, just up the road. Barnsley, they've got two. I've used it myself, and that was before some of these were built, and that was in the, it's in the grounds of a hotel. Uh, weird little one, there's just two chargers there. Always busy, uh, it's a popular one. Anyway, uh, to get back to this, so Tesla's decided that 12 is the answer here, and you have to believe that at some times, this will be mostly full. Uh, we're in a lull at the moment, it's just gone past lunchtime, middle of the week, not much happening. So the question then comes, what would happen if this was open to all? And that's a really interesting question. And it does, it is one that I answer on many occasions or try to answer. Uh, we did some filming. We did some uh, time-lapse filming at uh, Burton Wood Services. And that's always a busy one. That's a really, really busy one. Don't get queues very often, but occasionally it will, but mostly it's just up to its capacity. And we did some time-lapse photography there. We filmed, I think, for about 30, 40 minutes. Uh, we got a nice little video showing what's happening. And what it showed was this really fast turnaround. Uh, very, very fast. Most people only stay there 10 or 15 minutes, some of them up to 20 minutes. That's it. An awful lot of Tesla drivers, I have to say, use their cars properly. You put in what you need or you put in as much as whatever you're doing takes in time. And then when you finish whatever you're doing, you drive off whatever your state of charge. And an awful lot of Tesla drivers have learned that lesson and they're very, very good at that. So you find instead of a long, long charging session, most people in and out 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes, in our, I think about 30, 35 minutes session uh, where we were filming the time lapse, uh, there was no car there at the beginning that was still there at the end. So no car out of a very busy charger. There are a 
eight bays there, the V2 chargers as well. Uh, but there were eight cars there, eight bays there. They were all pretty much finished, but not one single car was still there for the whole half hour. Now, when we come over to things like the Renault 5 or the, uh, what else we got, the new Nissan Micra coming out. These are the smaller cars of the uh, BYD Dolphin Surf. And these have a stated time of charging of about 30 minutes, 25, 30, 35, somewhere around there. And it's from either 10 or 20% up to 80%. So if people were doing that, what that would mean on our own filming records is that they would spend twice as long in the bay if they could charge their car in that Tesla supercharger than a Tesla would or a Tesla driver would choose to. So that immediately doubles the length of time anyone takes and that would immediately start applying uh, cues. Uh, because they would just be there for so long. However, it does get a lot worse than that, and I, I'm afraid we, uh, in some ways, are our own, our own worst enemies, because so many people think when you plug into a charger, you've got to charge up to 100% every single time you stop. Now, the 10 or 20% to 80% might be 30 minutes. To go from the 80 up to 100, you're looking at another 30 minutes. That's the sort of difference. And that's why people say only charge to 80%. It's quick. So if somebody uh, gets their first car, doesn't know anything about charging, hasn't watched any of my videos, um, what they're going to do out of natural course, they used to fill the petrol tank up to the top, they're probably going to plug their EV in and charge it right to the top. Now that's going to take the best part of an hour and unfortunately that is what kills an awful lot of the open to all chargers. It's not that the cars are any different or anything, it's just the drivers will often treat them very differently and they will stick here for hours. I've got so many photos of people who've been on a charger. If you go to a grid server, for example, you get a lovely screen, it tells you how, uh, what the charging rate is, what the um, speed, what the um, uh, state of charge is, and also how long it's been plugged in. I regularly see over an hour, over an hour at a motorway services. What do people do for an hour at a motorway services? Are they genuinely waiting for their car to reach 100%? And one of those I filmed recently, uh, I think I'm right in saying it was on 97% state of charge and the uh, rate of charge, the speed of charge, was three kilowatts. So Tesla's done an awful lot in the last couple of years to try and get the charging time down. They're not worried about speed so much as how much time you spend on the charger. So you've got things like preconditioning. Uh, it's, well, it's October now. Uh, is it, yes, it is October today. And uh, it's actually quite warm in shirt sleeves. Uh, my preconditioning came on on the way up here. Um, I wasn't going to charge. I don't need to charge here, but I just use it for navigating. And it preconditioned. So we're preconditioning when a lot of people say, oh, it's plenty warm enough, you don't need to. The other thing we find quite often is that Tesla will throttle these back. So if it is a very busy charger, when you plug in, whatever state of charge you, you have when you plug in, it will always default to no more than 80%. Now it can be overridden, but you have to physically do it. If you just plug in and walk away, it'll be set to 80%. So Tesla's doing an awful lot to try and get uh, the charging times down. And I happen to believe here, Carl, that if this one was open to all, there's nothing else, nothing else nearby. If you're going to the gym, wow, wouldn't, why wouldn't you just plug in here? If you're going for McDonald's for a meal, just plug in. If you're going to any of the others, there's loads to do here and you can just plug it in. I, I personally feel that this would probably be a very, very popular uh, location and that could destroy uh, the business that's going here, which seems to be cars coming in and going out on a regular basis, everything's working fine, don't get reports or cues, everything's good. And why would anyone want to spoil that? Now I did a trip recently down to Cornwall. Yes, I do get down there and I do meet up with many of my viewers down there. And one of the things that I saw when I stopped off at Exeter Services, that was one of my destinations for doing some filming, by the way, I did also need to charge. So that was one of the few where I actually charged while I was filming. 
Uh, but what I saw was there were grid surfs down there, massive numbers of them, there's 36 grid surf chargers down there, and they were chock-a-block full. I can't say with any honesty that there was a queue, but every time someone pulled out, another one pulled in. It was constant, and I would say that during the time I was filming there, it was about 90, 95% full as a rule, and sometimes 100%. Just opposite, uh, there are 32 Tesla V3 chargers. Never got full. And there were cars coming in and out all the time. We saw a couple of them. Extra, by the way, they've got a pull-through bay. Uh, so if you're towing a caravan, or in this case, I tow, uh, someone was towing a boat, uh, you can pull in, you take up two chargers, but that's it. Uh, and the occupancy was such that it didn't really stop anyone. It didn't in any way stop anyone from charging. So you've got to think from Tesla's business model uh, in trying to convince people to go and buy a Tesla car, that one of the things they've always, always claimed is their biggest salesman, and that's the supercharger network. So I have to say, in final answer to your question, if opening this up to all cars and creating massive queues where nobody, particularly Tesla cars, can charge, it doesn't benefit anyone. So what's needed is for some of the other CPOs, the charge point operators like the Ospreys and the Onities and uh, GridServe, is for some of them to say there is a market here. However, that market is not at 79 or 85 pence. The market is here. This today, uh, at this time, peak time 39p, drops off about 5 o'clock to 35p. Why isn't anyone else doing that? It's probably the best advert you'll ever get for the car. And maybe, Carl, that's your solution to the problem, is that most other EV manufacturers don't care about your chargers. They do very little about them. They will sometimes put chuck money into a kitty and help others to grow their networks. But nobody else has taken it on themselves to say, I'm going to build the best supercharging network in the UK so that any of my customers, my Tesla customers, can go anywhere where they want. They will very rarely come across a queue. They will get the fastest charging they possibly can. And by far, it's the most reliable and the cheapest. So none of the other EV manufacturers have got any incentive to do anything to the chargers. In fact, over in America, Ford, of course, was one of the first to sign up and say, please, Tesla, can we borrow your chargers for our customers? Yeah. So I have to think here, Tesla knows what it's doing. It knows it's right. This is a good charger location and Sheffield is a good city and surroundings for what is there at the moment. And where you have to have other chargers, like on a motorway, you will find grid serves or the, uh, the apple greens. And so yet you do have a choice, unfortunately not at the ultra cheap prices that the Tesla open to all offer. So I hope that's helped you somewhat in your quest. I don't think you're going to be able to get in touch with Tesla, nor will they listen to me and say, we want these open to all. Yeah, I can't see it happening because there's so much at risk. So that's it. Uh, we're going to do another stop in Sheffield while we're here. Uh, so a little bit of filming there and then, um, yeah, head back over the other side of the Pennines. So thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. <laughs>